We're all here because there is, there is something about this teaching, there is something about this philosophy, there is something about the, the resonance of being together and of discussing these principles and how they work, or some days don't feel like they do. And those qualities, those unifying qualities that brought us here and keep us here are what these four themes, if you will, are about. Because it's one thing for us to say, God is all I am. God is all there is. God is all I am. It's another thing to know what that means. It's another thing still to really allow ourselves, because so much of it has to do with giving ourselves permission to actually absorb the largesse of that idea, the enormity of that idea, to allow ourselves to feel it, and then to call ourselves into action as it. Everybody breathe. Because this is where it begins, this is where it lives, this is where it ends. Is in our awareness of the life, of the presence, in, as, and through ourselves and everything around us including them, you know them, and that. I know it's hard to believe it about that, but there is no except. There is no other, which all begins with what do we really know about the thing itself? So. Ernest writes, he and I are on a first name basis, <clears throat> to suppose that the creative intelligence of the universe would create man in bondage and leave him bound would be to dishonor the creative power which we call God. And he goes on to say the seed of freedom, listen up now, the seed of freedom must be planted in the innermost being of man and woman. All beings. The seed of freedom must be planted in the innermost being. But like the prodigal son, we must make the great discovery for ourselves. So what's that mean? We read it, we talk about it, we listen about it, we show up on Sunday to be in the presence of these ideas and this energy and this resonance. But what's it mean to really discover it? Well, like I said a moment ago, this is really an adventure we're all on, and we're all in our own unique place with it. And that place for some of us may be doing all we can every morning to at least say a couple of gratitudes and every night to say a couple of gratitudes, and the rest of the day is kind of up for grabs because we still feel very much at the affect of other people's choices and the environment around us. That's definitely a possibility. I mean, even if you're not there now, can you relate to, to really feeling like you spend every day in the 
dryer just sort of tumbling around, you know, at the affect of everything. Some of us are, are at the point where we see conditions and circumstances happening around us, our own, or on a larger scale, and we're now able to better manage, I'll say, our engagement with what it is that's going on around us. It's not that we don't have a reaction, it's not that we don't have feelings about it, it's not that we don't have ideas about it. Yet, there is, there is a place in us where we remember that that, whatever the that is, or the they are, it's not all there is. There's, there's truth beyond that. There, as impossible as it is to see or understand or imagine or, or, or take in in the moment, there, there is perfection, there is solution, there is resolution, there is a peace that, that passes all understanding that actually lives right here. That's the thing itself. It all began as one life. And as that life could not help but express, could not help but reveal, could not help but create in its exuberance that exuberance led to you and me. And I'm not kidding. Very specifically, you and me. Because all of us are here on purpose. On purpose, with a purpose, all of us. And a big part of our purpose is our evolving, our engaging in, our capacity to show up as all that we are. To show up, to speak up, to stand up, to deliver, to be at the grocery store, to do the laundry, to experience life as only each of us can. Because each of us experience life and perceive life uniquely. That's one of, it's not just our fingertips that verify that we are each unique. Our perspectives and our experiences are absolutely unique to each of us as an individual. When it's cold out, do we all feel the cold? Yeah. When it's hot, do we all feel the hot? Absolutely. Do we all feel it the same? No. You are all sitting there right now looking at me. And all of you are seeing something different. All of you are hearing something different, which makes my job really interesting. So are you with me so far? The thing itself is the essence of it all, is the essence of us. The thing itself and under, not, I, I want to drop that word understanding because it's, this is not a mind process. We, we have to use our brain in order to hear the words, read the words, and interpret them. But this is a heart process. So much more 
than it is something that we can ever accomplish with our brain. Because our hearts have an intelligence that our brain cannot, cannot quite manage in the way it manages everything else. Our heart, on the other hand, left to its own devices, can take it all in, can open and receive and allow and be available for true guidance to come through loud and clear because, believe me, it never stops 24-7, is always having something to say true guidance to come through loud and clear and be our operating principle. Because we are that. We are one in that. We are individualized expressions of that. How brilliant. So, great. So what's the prodigal son got to do with all of this? Well, the prodigal son is a very relevant illustration of the dance we do. Because the prodigal son had it all. He and his brother had it all. But the prodigal son decided that there had to be more out there. So he went to check it out. And it wasn't very satisfying, that experience. But he kept trying to make it satisfying. Have we ever tried to fix the stuff around us to make it work? You know, if, if only they would fix their attitude, then everything would be better. If only this would unfold in this exact way, then everything would be perfect. Have we ever tried to manipulate stuff around us? Oh, excuse me. Have we ever tried to, um, <clears throat> to work with this to, for us to feel okay, for us to feel like everything was going to be okay? That's what the prodigal son did. Man, and he got really good at it. He made stuff up. He, he did all kinds of things to try to make it work. But there was something. This big, empty something that kept showing up, kept him dissatisfied. And what he realized was that his heart was aching to be home. So he went home, fully expecting the worst. Anybody here know about that? <laughs> fully expecting the worst. And what did he find? Open arms, right? A greeting the likes of which he could not in his wildest imagination have conjured. Ticked his brother off though. <laughs> but that's another story. His brother had his own issues. Anyway, the thing is that Even the experience of being greeted in the way he was by his father, being welcomed, having the banquet laid before him. What I can imagine is that, this isn't in the book, what I can imagine is that there may have been days when he still had doubts, when he still wondered when okay so this is really good when is the good gonna stop 
You guys have no idea what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> when is the other shoe going to... Very good. That's what happens when we lose sight of all that we are, of all that is always with us, of all that is always in play and available. That's what happens, is we doubt, we question. Now, we didn't necessarily come by that naturally in fact, we, some of us grew up with very good teachers in how to doubt, how to question, how to be prepared for the worst at all times. So I have really good news for you. You don't have to rehearse that anymore. You don't have to rehearse the worst case scenario in your mind ever again. You've got that one handled. Let it come, let it be, and spend equal time rehearsing its alternative. Because what if? What if it all worked out? What if the money that is needed for this project or this endeavor or this rent, whatever the case may be, showed up plus more, plus more, plus more? What if the appearance of the disease that has you or someone else terrified out of their wits, what if it evaporated, disappeared, as if it were never there? What if? What if? Play in that sandbox for a while. The thing about the thing itself is that it will meet you there because that's where it plays. In the realm of all possibility, in the realm of unlimited potential, prove me now, saith the Lord in one of my all-time favorite Bible quotes from Malachi. Prove me now. Take me on. Give me something to handle that you really think I can't. Ha. But we doubt. So what's this separation business? Because how am I doing on time? I have no idea. I'm doing okay. All right. So we hear about separation, right? Right? Do you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever heard about separation? Okay. Well, I wasn't sure. So we hear about this separation business, like um, everything would be okay if we, if we weren't separating ourselves from our wholeness, if we weren't separating ourselves from our divine provision, if we weren't, well, why in the world would we do that? It doesn't even make sense, right? It doesn't make sense that the prodigal son would leave. But he, he had to. He had to leave to make that discovery that the quote that I shared with you and the reading, the meditation that Carol shared with us mentions. He had to make the discovery for himself Ha being surrounded by all this privilege, not that that was a bad thing. Yum. Not that it was a bad thing. Yet there was this uneasiness in him. It's like, well, there's got to be more. This can't be all there is. So he separated himself, and that's exactly what we do. Not literally. For those of you who have heard me speak before, you've heard me say, you know, we're the ones that turn around and go this way. And what happens if, if we, because of course, 
even though God is all persons, God is not a person. God is God. God is creative intelligence. God is source. God is the universe. Well, what happens, let's just talk about the universe for right now. What happens with the universe when we go like this? When we walk away in our hearts, in our minds, in our distractions, what happens? Where does it go? It stays. In it, the fullness of its presence, everywhere, all the time, 24-7, 365, or 66, depending. It just is. So if we imagine the prodigal son story, the son left the house, the father stayed. But was the father still with his son? You can imagine that, right? His heart was with him. His prayers were with him. His yearning for him was with him. It's the same. It's exactly the same. When we doubt, when we get nervous, when we think this is too much to ask, when we think this is too big for even God to handle, I mean, really, when we do the things we do in our humanness, the universe is still standing there going, come home. Come home. Come home where you can, no matter how afraid you are, no matter how filled with doubt you are, no matter how much you're questioning, you can feel the embrace of my love. You can let it move through you, pushing out anything unlike it before it, so that you can recalibrate and remember, oh yeah, I have all of creative intelligence at my disposal. Not only in me, as me, through me, always, no matter what, no matter whether I remember or not, no matter what I've done, what I didn't do, what I ought to have done, those are all our shoulds, by the way, no matter what, I have all love. I have all guidance. I have all peace. I have all power. I have all poise. I have all clarity. I have all wisdom. I have all wholeness at my fingertips. At the edge of my mind. And once we decide to change our mind, God will show us how. Show us the way. Make the way clear. Illuminate it before us. With luminaria. <coughs> what I profoundly hope and you will rarely hear me use that word, is that everyone leaves here today with at least a little more willingness to let the thing itself have room in you. Let the thing itself have room in your life. Let the thing itself have have the, the places and the people and the circumstances in which to stretch out and do its thing, because it will. It doesn't know how to do anything less. We're the ones with our foot on the hose. I suggest we all take it off 
and go let her rip and see what happens. Are you willing? Yes. Are you available? Yes. Then as we all make ourselves a place of welcome, not only for the activity of the divine in us in an ever greater way, but make ourselves a place of welcome for every resolution, solution, answer, everything that is running around in our hearts and minds is, oh my gosh, what if this doesn't happen? Or what if this happens? Remember what I told you about, you don't need to rehearse that. Make ourselves a place of welcome for the miraculous. Because it is right here. I have something, of course, to share. When we can remember that there is a power in the universe that honors and responds, big words, honors and responds to our faith in it. When we can remember that we are individualized inseparable in this life. When we can remember that it is done unto us as we believe, not as we hope we believe, not as we'd like to believe, but as we believe and expect. You know, I, I have to tell you, if we expect a good outcome, we're going to get one. You can, you can quote me on that. The thing is, we need to stay in the anticipation of good and make room for the bigger good outcome. Because when we have an expectation of a specific outcome, may or may not show up that way. That's not God messing with us. That's not saying, well, you can't have it that way. You, you have to have it this way. No, no, no. We don't see it. We can't see it. We can't see far enough to see the whole idea. But we have to make room for it. So in our anticipation of a good outcome, make room for the biggest good outcome you can imagine and then say, okay, that's all I got. That's my biggest good outcome I can imagine. And I'm available for more, better. I'm available to have my mind blown. I'm available to just have this all swept away. I'm available. That's what I'm talking about, about constantly stretching ourselves and staying in that willingness and that availability to the thing itself as the thing itself. The truth which we discover within us to the degree that we discover it is the thing itself. The thing itself. So this is my prayer for you going into the new year. And always. Namaste is one of my favorite expressions. And just to remind us all of its origins. I honor the place in you. In which the entire universe dwells. I honor the place in you. Which is of love of integrity, of wisdom, and of peace. And when you are in that place in you, and when I am in that place in me, we are one. Thank you. Namaste. 
So shall we do a treatment? Okay. Put a little frosting on the cake. Recognizing the one power, the one presence, the one life. Called by many names, never cared about the names. The names were our thing. It is the thing itself. And I know that it is peace, and it is harmony, and it is balance, it is clarity, it is serenity, it is love. And I know that these qualities, as well as all of the others, that could be named, that we might be calling forth right here and now in the privacy of our own hearts. I know that all of these qualities live and move through my being just as surely as my heart beats, my blood flows. just as surely as I'm standing here. And so in that knowing, in that recognition, in that oneness, then any affirmation, any claim, any acknowledgement of good in and as and through my life, in and as and through the lives of everyone here, in and as and through the lives of everyone that hears my voice, any in, in and as and through the lives of the lives that are touched by the people who are here in any way. Those claims, those affirmations, those acknowledgements are simply saying, oh yeah, that includes wholeness. Oh yeah, that includes perfect resolution and solution. That includes ease and grace in all things. That includes balance and joy and harmony. In me, as me, through me, in us, as us, through us, all around us, everywhere we go, in everything we do. And so with profound gratitude, recognizing how perfectly all is demonstrating in divine order, in highest order, in the highest idea of ever greater unfolding good, for each of us individually, for this community in its formation of the mental equivalent of a new ministerial leader. And for the world. I release this word to divine order and outcome knowing how flawlessly it responds by corresponding. I let it be as together we affirm, and so it is.